Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> as we said, my name is Mike Little. So I'm the co-founder of WordPress. And, um, and my stuff's not working. There we go. <laughs> um, there's my contact details, Twitter, website, uh, LinkedIn, if you need to see that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about WordPress history, um, where it's come from, some of the key events. Um, I'm also going to talk about um, why WordPress has been so successful. I'm also going to explain why it's so successful, uh, that it is so successful and why. Um, and also talk a little bit about the future and hopefully give some insights as to why um, it has been particularly successful uh, open source project. So, first of all, um, <coughs> WordPress itself was forked from a previous open source project, one called Cafelog slash B2 or B2 Cafelog, um, which was blogging software uh, produced by uh, one chap, Michel Valdrigui, in France. Uh, in 2001, he actually started that. Um, we find out later that he was learning PHP when he wrote that, but uh, we'll let that pass. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in 2003, or late 2002, Michel disappeared off the, off the web. Um, nobody knew where he was. People in France who knew him personally said his... Um, his phone was uh, disconnected, his flat was empty, so it was quite worrying. Um, but also, just from the users, the few, around 2,000, approximately 2,000 users of the software, there were known bugs, even the domain was coming up for renewal. So, um, a chap in Houston, Texas, uh, um, uh, Matt Mullenweg, uh, posted on his blog, on his B2 blog, um, and explained that, uh, like myself, he'd gone through a number of different open source or a number of different packages uh, looking for blogging platform. B2 is the one he settled on, in part because it was open source, because it was GPL licensed. Um, and, he, and he speculated that if Michelle's disappeared, um, then at least he could take that code because it's GPL and do something with it. And if he got run over by a bus, then he would be able to uh, then somebody else will be able to uh, take over. I responded to that blog post with a comment and said, Matt, if you're serious about forking B, uh, B2, then count me in. And literally that comment on that blog post was the start of what eventually became WordPress. So that was January 2003. We got our first release out, just the two of us, in uh, May 2003. Um, and it's been going strong ever since. Uh, 2013, we celebrated our 10th anniversary all over the world. Um, and there's been, well, 32 major releases from 0.71, which is the very first one, uh, to the current 4.6, which came out just less than, just about three weeks ago, um, and over 180 minor releases. The next one, 4.61, is due out in the next few days with a few uh, minor bug fixes. Um, some highlights along the way, sort of technical stuff. Um, I should actually ask for a show of hands of those who are familiar with WordPress. Oh, good, quite a few. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's improved as it's gone along from what was essentially just a very simple blogging platform, not particularly well written, Michelle will admit that himself. Um, and it's gone through a number of different uh, uh, improvements. We added pages and themes, widgets, update notifications, automatic up upgrading, a key uh, 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 feature. Um, things like auto-embed support. Um, <clears throat> and recently... Um, a JSON REST API has been introduced, uh, which is, I believe, key to the future of WordPress. Um, <clears throat> I should say, by the way, because I've left you suspended for quite a while, Michelle did turn up again. There wasn't anything major that happened. Um, he would basically, I think, had been made redundant and had to kind of move back home sort of thing, and this internet thing wasn't so important. Um, but it's huge. It's grown uh, immensely. From our first release, we got more and more people on board, um, and certainly for the first uh, three years, really, to be honest, continually, it's always been done by volunteers. Although there's some number of professionals in, in the WordPress game, um, it's always been built uh, by volunteers, and it's a huge volunteer community. But we're now currently powering more than 26% of the top 10 million websites. More than one in four websites uses WordPress, which is absolutely huge. Um, if you just look at the CMS market share, it's uh, close to 60%. Interestingly, 
there's still 55% of those top 10 million websites don't use an off-the-shelf CMS or use um, uh, custom-built CMS. That slice is getting a lot smaller. There's more and more sites using off-the-shelf CMS as some description. And of course, WordPress sitting at 59.2% of that market um, is, is the leader by a very, very long way. One year alone, we increased our market share by two whole Drupal shares, so number three, uh, two in just one year. Um, <clears throat> numbers are quite hard to come, come by, actually, actual numbers, but we reckon there's well over 100 million WordPress sites, um, and the latest version, 4.6, has had more than 7.5 million downloads in three weeks. Um, it's hugely popular. Uh, some major users of WordPress, yeah, eBay, Sony, uh, various different people, some famous blogs, technology companies, um, music companies, uh, news. I've got another slide about news companies as well. Uh, schools and universities, huge numbers of those. Um, Metro in the UK, uh, about three years ago now, they converted all their pro web properties over to WordPress and have been going strong with it ever since. They've just recently launched a WordPress-driven uh, iPad app, um, which is, I think it's a sport-oriented one, um, which is, is a, a huge thing. Uh, the whole of BBC America uses WordPress um, in, a, in a particularly uh, clever way, using one of its uh, features, multi-site, which allows them to very, very quickly spin up a new site whenever there's a new series or a new program that they need to um, really feature and promote well. Um, and that process of spinning up a new site has gone down from in excess of three weeks to three days by using WordPress, um, absolutely huge. Rolling Stones, uh, they relaunched their website on their 50th anniversary, about four or five years ago now, um, and have been going strong on, on uh, WordPress ever since. Um, this is an interesting statistic. <laughs> These are the top 10 US, US newspapers by circulation, and all but one of them use WordPress somewhere on the web properties. It's absolutely huge. These are massive companies that could afford in-house developers. They have in-house developers to develop anything they want, and they've all moved over to WordPress. Um, yeah, huge. Um, and many more. So NASA, data.gov, Library Congress, the official website of Sweden, the official website of Finland, all use WordPress. Um, huge in South America, lots of government uh, sites in South America, and in the UK as well. Um, my very first um, professional job after leaving my old day job and deciding to work uh, solely in WordPress um, was the number 10 Downing Street website, which was um, quite significant as a, as a first job, bit of pressure there. Um, it's no longer WordPress, unfortunately. They took it in-house, still WordPress, in 2010. Um, and then when the GDS stuff started up, they eventually ported it over to their, their new in-house system. Um, it's, it is huge in education as well. There are uh, some US universities with uh, 40 and 50,000 individual blogs running WordPress. Um, basically, every student gets one and so on. Um, and it's not just ordinary websites or blogs as well. So there's a great add-on called BuddyPress, which gives you basically a social network uh, in a plugin. And sites like DownSyndrome.com, which is actually down for some reason at the moment, um, which was a great uh, uh, resource for sufferers from and uh, carers for people with uh, Down syndrome. Um, and it gave them a uh, Facebook-like experience without actually having to be on Facebook, which we, I expect would have been a horrendous experience to, for, uh, to, to be public on Facebook, but it gave them a Facebook experience behind a, a private site. Uh, a disability site is another one that's using um, BuddyPress. Um, E-commerce as well, there are um, huge numbers of uh, sites using e-commerce. WooCommerce is probably the most popular add-on uh, uh, for, for WordPress. And in fact, it powers 21% of the top 1 million e-commerce websites, which again is, is fantastic numbers. Um, I think if you, if you look at from that company who's collect those statistics, if you look at the, the whole of uh, e-commerce sites, it's 39%, it's, uh, I think. Um, but that includes lots and lots of uh, really, really small ones. Um, 
this was an interesting use of WordPress. The Walking Dead, anybody know the TV series Walking Dead? Been going a few years now, I don't know what, what series we're on, but I think series three, um, AMC did this thing called Story Sync, whereby those who were watching the original series as it was broadcast live um, could use their iPads or other tablets to uh, interact with the program. So in sync with the original live broadcast in the US, um, this app basically introduced the character. So as a new character came on screen, it would pop up information about this character. Um, it was interactive so people could comment, people could like things. Um, it did little one and one and two, uh, two answer uh, um, surveys like you know should Johnny have killed that zombie with the with the axe or with the spade and that type of thing and basically made the whole program interactive as it was uh, being broadcast live and it was a WordPress site under the hood it was basically just a WordPress site um, and it was so good that it was nominated for an Emmy which I didn't know websites could get nominated for an Emmy um, alas it didn't win the Games of Thrones app did. <laughs> um, here's another one, uh, one that's uh, uh, personally huge for me as um, I built this site. Um, site code, I'm a scientist, get me out of here. It's been going since 2010 or I haven't been involved with it since 2010. Um, it's an award-winning site, uh, a, a science engagement site where school kids in their science lessons engage with a number of scientists uh, they get to ask, uh, ask them questions, they get to interact them with live chats and so on. After a week of doing that, they then get to vote on their favourite scientist. Um, and after the first day, the one with the least votes gets kicked out of the competition. At the end of that week, the scientist wins uh, prize money to promote science. Um, it's been absolutely huge. As I say, it's won awards. Um, there was a, a, a one from a while ago, and this was a more recent one, 2013, STEM Activity of the Year. We even got mentioned in Parliament as being such a good thing that, that uh, encouraged science in school. Uh, why on earth were the government not doing things like that? Um, here's another uh, interesting use of WordPress, uh, a YMCA gamified youth health programme. So basically trying to get kids back into uh, exercise, doing things... Uh, to do with uh, sports and stuff like that. And basically they had smart badges that interacted with a, with a um, uh, booth that was basically powered by WordPress. So every time they attended the gym, it would clock up a, uh, a point. Every time they took part in an activity, it would clock anything up, uh, up and they won badges uh, for motivation and things like that. Again, brilliant use of, of, uh, of the WordPress software. Um, and... I'm sure most of you will know this, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Um, for me, one of the key reasons WordPress has been so successful is this, the GNU General Public License. It's not quite the same as open source. Open source is a bit more of a blanket term, and I'm going to go into that uh, a little later. Um, but basically, the GPL, um, it's copyleft. It's a legal hack. It uses a copyright law to give users freedoms in exchange for developers' rights. So it's quite a turnaround. Um, for many developers, and I've had many interesting conversations with developers about it. Um, and it gives us the four freedoms. Uh, the freedom to run the program for any purpose, the freedom to study how the program works and change it so it does your computing as you wish. Uh, again, this is one of the reasons why WordPress is so successful. Uh, freedom to redistribute copies so that you can help your neighbour. Doesn't particularly happen too much with WordPress because it's freely available anyway. Um, and the freedom to distribute copies of your modified version to others. Um, one of the, in WordPress's past histories, one of its uh, key turning points that made it more popular was uh, another blogging platform, Movable Type, written in Perl as it happens, also seemed to be open. Everybody got the source code, they could install it on their sites, and they could do uh, what they want with it, wanted with it. Um, and then version 3, I think it was, came out. And it was um, a major release. It had been after a long delay with nothing new. Um, under the hood, it had been completely rewritten. It was faster, it was better, it was going to be more wonderful. But the features didn't see, the new features didn't seem to be particularly huge. But what was really important was that they changed their license as they could. It turns out that whilst it seemed to be an open source license, it wasn't quite open enough. And they decided that if you were using it for commercial purposes, including um, using adverts on, their, on, on your website or using it for a professional site, you suddenly had to pay money. 
Um, and that upset quite a lot of people. Some, though, not because of the money, but because of what they felt was a loss of freedom. And one particular blogger, a prominent blogger, um, wrote an article about it. And basically, the, art the article was, was uh, called Free Enough, um, where he realised that his use of this movable type was not free enough. Um, and he converted his, I think, 11 sites over to WordPress. Um, and to show that it wasn't about the money, the money that he would have had to pay in licence fee donated to the WordPress cause. Um, and that, amongst another, a, a number of uh, prominent bloggers, was one of the key turning points. And it's this freedom, the GPL freedom, that, that really makes a difference. Um, so as I said, it uses copyright laws to give users freedom in exchange for developers' rights. Um, and also it prevents you from restricting anyone else's rights. It's viral. It used to be hated, um, especially by the companies the likes of Microsoft. Um, they've embraced it now. In fact, Microsoft maintain um, a, a um, IIS, their, word, their web server, an IIS version of WordPress uh, and have done for the past seven or eight years, um, which is quite interesting actually um, so yeah GPL free as in freedom not free as in pizza um, and in fact yeah it's okay to s sell GPL software um, so how do people make money in the WordPress world uh, they sell themes or rather they sub sell support and updates for themes most theme companies aren't selling themes they're selling access to the themes and they're selling access to support and to updates um, Selling plugins, which are add-ons to WordPress. Um, selling services like hosting, development, training, books, and so on. Lots of different ways that, that people can make money. Um, and it's actually now seen as a multi-billion dollar industry. And it really is seen as an industry. I've spoken to people uh, who've... Uh, one chap I spoke to at Word, WordCamp London in April. Um, had just left school at 16 and decided he wanted a career in WordPress. That was his ambition, was to work in WordPress. On, at that same conference, I spoke to somebody who'd just done a three-year computing degree with exactly the same ambition. He wanted to work in WordPress. Not in software, not in websites, in WordPress. It really is an industry. It's an, industrial, it's an industry choice that people uh, make. So there's some major companies uh, involved in WordPress. Automatic, started by Matt Mullenweg, the other co-founder. This is the company behind WordPress.com. And just for clarity, WordPress.com is a service owned by Automatic. It is not WordPress the software. WordPress the software is still an open source, community-driven software project. Um, but they have uh, a number of different things. Uh, VIP hosting for some of those major players that I've talked about before. They have a number of different services, Paul, Daddy, BuddyPress, Kismet, and so on. Starting in 2005, um, Almost 500 employees now. They've had a massive lift uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, they don't really release figures. Uh, turnover, somewhere in the 75 to $100 million a year range. Uh, but somebody did tweet um, a figure that got instantly retracted and he got his hand slapped um, that the company was valued, had been recently valued at $1.6 billion. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting start. Actually, they've moved down in this chart. Uh, but this is monthly uniques from a company called Comscore, one of the major uh, collectors of stats. Um, and if you look at the, the big players, Google, Facebook, and so on, WordPress.com, 83, 83 million uniques a month. Um, and look at these employer numbers. Amazon, in fourth place, 230,000 employees to do what they do. Um, WordPress, 498. In fact, a few years ago, they were at number four with about 150 employees. Um, WooThemes, another uh, company, very, very successful, South African company, uh, provider of themes and plugins. Um, they're the ones behind WooCommerce uh, uh, product, again, which is an open source, although they sell lots of add ons to uh, WooCommerce and sell their themes. Woocom uh, sorry, uh, yeah, WooCommerce was their. Um, biggest money earner, despite the fact that they gave it away for free by selling the add-ons and so on. Um, it made them um, extremely valuable to the point where Automatic purchased them for an estimated $30 million. Again, figures <laughs> are only vaguely accurate. Um, Rocket Genius, another one, uh, turnover three to four million. Uh, just some incredible numbers. WP Engine, a hosting company, they specialize in 
WordPress. They only host WordPress sites. There are many more companies doing this now, at least a dozen major players uh, in this field. Again, um, huge turnovers. Um, Envato, a theme and plugin marketplace. If any of you have come across Theme Forest, I'm sure you have if you're WordPress users. Um, it is just a marketplace. Uh, when I run my beginner courses, I caution people away from Theme Forest. Um, but uh, it's huge, uh, 250 plus employees, uh, and just to show how big it can get, one individual seller of, of uh, theme, or themes, surpassed a million dollars of products uh, sold for just one individual person. Um, and tens of thousands of freelancers and agencies and so on, uh, SEO marketing companies. Uh, a few years ago, 2013 in fact, I received an award from a SEO marketing uh, conference in Manchester um, for my contribution to digital, where they, having started organising the conference for I think about the third year, they um, asked a whole load of questions about what software people used and what they did and so on. And they realized that 100% of their delegates used WordPress for their business. Uh, so they decided to give me an award and invite me along, which was really, really nice. Um, again, one of the things that makes WordPress so popular, so great, is this concept, which was only really articulated in 2014, but had been around for a while. Matt Mullenweg suggested uh, a good rule of thumb that companies who make or organizations that make money from WordPress should dedicate 5% of their people to work on something to do with core, with the core of WordPress, to improve WordPress, to, to contribute back to this open source project that makes them money. Um, embarrassingly, his own company wasn't hitting 5%. He soon rectified that. Um, a few people protested about it, thinking it was about using, dedicating a developer. If you've only got three developers, why would you pay a developer to spend that much time, 5% of their time, one, you know, half a day a week, whatever it is. Um, but in fact, um, many, many companies have embraced this. Some companies, um, I know of two, who have full-time employees whose sole job is to contribute back to WordPress, not do work for clients, but to contribute back to WordPress because it makes WordPress better, which makes their businesses better. Um, and the community is huge. Every single release has more than 100 different people contributing to it. Sometimes it's as high as 400 people. And it's not always code contributions either. Um, WordPress is available in uh, 90 languages, 70 languages, I think, um, of which... 50 plus are 100% translated into those languages. Um, in fact, two years ago, for the first time, uh, downloads of WordPress in non-English surpassed those of English. So um, although those numbers don't reflect the whole world, um, certainly in terms of downloads, it's more non-English than it is in English. Um, and part of that community are developers. And one of the things that they've done is uh, produce more than 3,000, almost 4,000 free themes, GPL licensed themes that are available for people to use uh, with WordPress, and over 44,000 plugins. Um, many user groups around the world, up to 30 in the UK, they keep some come and go. Uh, 10 in the Northwest, we're really quite blessed in the Northwest for WordPress uh, groups. Uh, we have things called Contributor Days, where we encourage people to come along and contribute to WordPress. And again, not just about coding, but about language, about documentation, about running community groups and so on, and even outreach, like talks at various conferences. Um, and it's been a particularly diverse community. We do incredibly well for a tech community in terms of um, attitudes and um, the things that we do to keep our community diverse. I was incredibly proud in 2014 to be involved in uh, Manchester WordCamp conference where we had 50% um, female speakers in both the tech and the general uh, uh, talks and in fact uh, a couple of years before that, we're at Camp Lancaster on the second day of that two-day conference. Um, there was only one male speaker, and all the other speakers were female. Um, and these word camps are brilliant uh, conferences that are um, run as community unconferences, um, and in particular, they are hugely popular conferences 
uh, that always try to keep a ridiculously low ticket price, like £30 for a two-day conference with T-shirts and free beer on the Saturday night. Uh, amazing. Uh, so the future. I've mentioned a few things that I think are significant. So this REST API. Um, the REST API, which has been in development for about three years, the first part of it went into Core WordPress, so it's been developed as a separate project. The first part of it went into Core WordPress two major releases ago, um, and there's continuing work going on with it. Um, it turns WordPress into a building block. So there are now some significant sites, uh, Wired is one, um, who are building front ends in whatever application language they want to use. Uh, often JavaScript based or Ruby or whatever their people are familiar with, whatever they think is best for a front end. And then that talks to the standard WordPress back end with, with all its uh, um, ease of use and familiarity that, 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 that comes with that. And that gives them incredible power. And I've seen some really sophisticated um, sites being built with the WordPress REST API. Um, it's going to make it embedded pervasive and as I mentioned it's a building block there's some really really exciting stuff in fact starting today not more than 30 miles away from here there's a um, a week-long uh, boot camp for learning uh, how to really get involved with the rest API and make uh, great use of it um, hosting I mentioned hosting companies um, it really is getting huge all the major players are dedicating an immense number of resources to WordPress um, GoDaddy, um, <clears throat> in fact, they've just bought a, a, a WordPress-based company. Uh, just came out two years, two days ago, the news, I think. Um, <clears throat> and they're going to embed that into their uh, hosting package. Um, local company to me, 34SP, uh, they completely rewrote uh, their uh, VPS-based hosting to be solely about WordPress and, and now uh, uh, offer that as a, as a premium uh, WordPress-based uh, solution, and there are lots and lots of companies. There's lots of uh, investment in that, um, and we're aiming for 50% of the web. We're at 26%. It kind of seems achievable now. Um, <laughs> there's a long way to go, I think. Uh, but apparently, internally in Automatic, there is a company uh, called the I think they call the 50% team or something like that, who are thinking about what can be done to help WordPress get that way. Um, and some of the lessons learned from um, WordPress's success, um, good communication. So in the very early days, it was a very typical techie project. Um, people um, talked over IRC, very inaccessible, um, mostly on US time zones. Uh, despite the fact right from the very beginning it was uh, very much an international uh, project. It got better and it's getting better and there's been lots of different efforts to try and get communication better. Um, investment in the community, I talked about companies who are dedicating their employees to work with WordPress. Each release of WordPress for the, about the past 10 probably, maybe more, has had a different release lead. So somebody prominent within the developer community becomes a release lead for the four months of the releases, three releases a year. Um, and it rotates, it's different people, so there's never just one single person in charge. Um, and the companies that employ them have to basically say, I'm going to lose an employee for four months, but it's worth it because we build, it for, we build reputation from having our employees run WordPress for a, for a quarter. Um, Oh, for, for a release. Um, and yeah, they are investing back into the community in lots of different ways. Uh, one particular company um, uh, employed a, a developer, a friend of mine, and um, she was employed to be 50% developer, 50% community outreach. Um, it's 100% of her job is community outreach now. So the company just pays for her to go out to meetups, to fly around the world, to help people start meetups, to get, go to non-WordPress conferences, to get people to understand that WordPress is a serious project. Um, and yeah, it's, there's just many, many examples like that. Um, but one of the philosophies of WordPress is users over developers. So the users are more important than developers, which doesn't always go down well, but it's really, really true. And cooperate, oh, when is it all missing? Cooperate with your rivals. Um, we in the past have had some major cooperations with Drupal, with Joomla, whether it's over security issues in common shared libraries, 
um, and you know each, each has learned from each other um, um, and in fact their wordpress.org philosophy is, is documented on their about pages um, out of the box it should work out of the box there's too many technical projects uh, technical products don't work out of the box you've got a lot of work to get them working uh, designed for the majority uh, wordpress.com automatic are in an incredible privileged space of being able to try things with wordpress and expose them to tens of millions of users and see how they develop um, or how they use them, how they interact, and then change their mind a day later. In fact, at times, they do more than a dozen releases live to WordPress.com a day. Uh, decisions, not options. We don't give additional options to users when we can help it. We keep the software simple to use, but under the hood, we make it so that add-ons can make those decisions. So rather than give somebody a choice of A or B, we add a hook into the system that means somebody can produce an add-on to give you that choice of A and B. It makes it simpler for those initial users and, oh, you've just built yourself an add-on market. Um, the vocal minority, they are the developers. They've always got something to say. Everybody wants applications to work for developers, um, but in fact, it needs to work for the users and that's one of the, the things is we don't, uh, we aren't driven by the, the vocal mi minority. Um, other things, investments in third-party tools. So there's been money uh, spent in external libraries, uh, helping developers with external libraries that WordPress relies on. And this was key, choose the right license. Um, there's some new development in the WordPress world with React, working with the REST API. Uh, React is something from Facebook. It turns out its license isn't as open as we thought it was, and there's a clause in there that allows them to use patents to stomp on somebody that they don't like. Um, be careful about those licenses. Not all open source licenses are the same. The GPL does not allow you to do that. Um, be open, be flexible. The communication problems were a big issue for a while and then everything, w there was lots of effort to try and open things up, make things flexible um, and make it easier for people to, to get involved. Um, we, I know we haven't got time for questions. That was my last slide. Um, I'm going to be around for the lunchtime sessions, uh, so if you need to ask me any questions. Uh, hopefully that was in, informative. Um, if you've not investigated WordPress, definitely look into it and look into some of the many, many companies around who are profiting from something we just give away for free. Cool, thank you.